Hello world, Noah here. Welcome to episode 7 of Java 2 Kotlin. In this episode, we are going to take a look at properties. Now, if you've used another language like C Sharp or Swift, you already know what this is, and the syntax is actually going to look pretty similar. But if you're just coming from Java, this will be a uh, pretty new concept, um, and it'll basically just be um, a nicer way of dealing with, um, you know, a certain... Uh, situation, a nicer way, uh, a more Kotlin way of writing some code. And so what we're going to do is we're going to modify the person class so that instead of accessing first name and last name, you'll simply access a name value that will contain the first and last name of that person. So if we wanted to do this um, in, in uh, Java, we'll do this in Java first, we would get rid of the getters for first name and last name and we would write a getter public string get name and this is going to return first name space last name and let's put a semicolon so basically just like that so you'll note that this uh, getter this is still a getter but it's not actually backed by a value there's no instance variable here called name right there's first name and last name but there's nothing called name this basically, this method will basically use the first name and last name values, whatever they are at the time it's being called, to create a value. But it's not just a regular old getter because it's not just giving the value of an instance variable. It's actually computing a value right here, and then it's giving it to you in that way. So that's essentially the first thing we're going to do. We'll deal with the setting part uh, later, but let's just start with that. And so the first thing that we're going to do um, is we want to make first name and last name be inaccessible um, outside of the class because we only want to allow people to access the name value. So all we need to do is simply write the word private in front. So private val first name, if I could spell that right, and private val last name. And of course this is going to give us errors because they're private right there. Um, but we'll get to that in just a second. So we basically are now marking these instance variables as private um, so that they cannot be uh, accessed outside of the class. And so now we are actually going to put semi uh, curly braces rather because we want to write a body to this class. And we basically want to declare a variable called name, which is a string. But we don't really want to declare a variable. We want to declare this sort of dynamic variable, a variable that when you ask for its value, it computes the value instead of storing it. Because if we had to store name as an instance variable, then any time we wanted to change the first name or the last name, we would have to recompute the value of name, and that gets kind of messy. It's nicer this way, where name just takes the current value of first name and the current value of last name, whatever they are, and gives it to you. So that if these values happen to change, there's nothing else that we need to worry about. And so what we can do um, is we can actually write uh, a getter and a setter for this value. And so what we'll do first is we're going to write get, and then parentheses, and then a curly braces. And we're just going to say return first name, space, last name, just like that. So this get turns uh, orange. It's a reserved word when you're using it for a variable. But essentially, this means um, that if I try to get the value of name, it's going to give me the this value, first name, space, last name. And um, first, I'm going to change that to a val for now, just so we don't get the error, and we'll uh, change it in just a second. But I can now access name, just like that. And it's going to say me.name, right? Uh, but if I run this code... Um, whoops, I need to fix the Java version first. This is just going to say me.getName. Right? Okay, so let's try running this again. So it's going to say my name is and then Noah space R because my first name is Noah and my last name is R. So that's great. And this syntax looks the exact same um, here. I could have written, you know, fun get name. And then I could have said return first name space last name. And then I could have said me.getName. 
but that doesn't really look like the rest of Kotlin, because with Kotlin, you know, you access these variables directly, so a property lets you make it look like it's a variable, but it's actually not. It's a little bit different. And so that's a nice feature, um, just to make your code a little bit more clean, um, and to make it, uh, you know, more um, constant or more uh, similar. The one other thing you can do, um, because get is a function, you can actually just say get equals, just like that. So this is the equivalent, the exact equivalent of what I wrote before, but it only takes up one line. So when I call get, it's going to compute first name plus space plus last name. This is the same thing that we saw in the functions video where you could use an equal sign with a function. So that's nice. Now the other thing that we want to be able to do is to change the value uh, of name. So if I specify a name like Noah R, I want to take the first name Noah and the last name R and assign it to the first name and last name variables. And again, let's do this in Java first, just to make it nice and simple. Public, uh, sorry, void set name string name. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say string array components, whoops, components equals name dot split at the oops at the space. So I'm basically going to split the name at the space and it's going to give me the first name and the last name inside of an array and I'm going to say uh, first name equals components 0 and last name equals components 1. So if the example uh, is Noah R then it's actually going to give me Noah an array that contains Noah and then R. So first name will be set to the first value, or the index 0 value, which is Noah, and last name will be set to the other value, which is R. Now, in this case, I'm actually just assuming that this is a correctly formatted string. Maybe you'd want to do a check on it, but I'm not going to worry about that for the case of this episode. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing um, over here. We're going to write a set uh, method or a set function and this is going to take a parameter which we're going to call value just like that um, and then what we're going to do is we're also going to change this from var from val to var because we want to be able to have a setter for this property and so for the setter we're just going to say basically the same thing val components equals value dot split at the space and this value is a string. I don't need to explicitly state that it is a string, um, just because since name is a string, when I set it to be a new value, it'll know that that new value is going to be a string. So that's nice. So I'm splitting at the space, and then I'm just saying first name equals components zero, um, or I guess this dot first name. Well, it doesn't actually matter. We'll fix that in one second. And last name is equal to components and index 1. And these errors, these uh, values are red because we need to change them from val to var so that they can be changed um, or modified. And you'll remember that these are now marked as private, so that's okay. Um, they can't be accessed outside of the person class, but they can be changed. So we now have this set value right here, um, and that's going to set first name and last name based on the components. Now there is a nicer way to do this in Kotlin, but um, for the sake of um, parity, I'm just going to um, write it like that. And so that's all we need to do there. And so just to give a quick example, I'm going to do it in Java first. I'm going to say me.setName um, to, uh, you know, Alice B, for example. And now I'm going to, um, what is it, S-Y-S-O, sout. There we go. I always forget which one it is. Me.getName. So let's run the Java version first. And this is, you know, not going to be terribly helpful because it just says the exact same thing. But basically what it's doing is it's taking Alice B, it's splitting it at the space to get Alice and B, and then it's setting them. And I could actually um, add a print statement here to print out uh, components. I always add an extra E there. And you'll see that it's first Alice and then B, which is what we expect. And it's setting first name equal to Alice and last name equal to B, just like that. So that is great. And now in the, uh, in the Java version, 
um, we want to do, or the Kotlin version want to do the same thing. So me dot name equals Alice B. So instead of calling it like a setter, you just set it like you're actually setting a variable. So again, it's more consistent with the rest of our Kotlin code. And I think in general, it just looks a little bit nicer, um, you know, in my opinion. And if I go ahead and print out me like that, let's run this. It's going to it's going to tell me the first name, the last name, and the age, but it's not going to tell me the value of name because this isn't actually a variable, right? In the same way that in the Java version we have get name and set name, but there's no instance variable called name. That would be called a backing variable. So like um, age, for example, we have get age and set age, and those just refer to this instance variable called age. So this right here is the backing variable for that getter and setter. But here we have a getter and setter that don't have a backing value. So name isn't actually stored as an instance value or an instance variable. It's just stored as a getter and setter uh, function, which is uh, exactly what we would expect from the Java version. But if I were to print out me.name, then it will do exactly what we expect. And it'll say Alice B, because it'll first print out, uh, you know, the first name is Alice, the last name is B. So it's going to set first name equal to Alice last name equal to b, and we saw from before, from looking at the two-string method, that the first name was set to Alice and the last name was set to b. There is a way to create um, variables that have uh, backing values. Um, so just to give like a little example, and this doesn't really fit with the whole like person idea, but what I could do is let's say I wanted to have a counter um, value, and then whenever something happens, uh, like I could basically do something like this. So I could say set value, um, and then maybe I want to like, you know, uh, or I could just add like an if statement. I could do something like if value is greater than zero, then I want to set it. And I have to use the reserved, the field, reserved word there, field equals value. You'll see it gets highlighted like that because it's special word. I can't say counter equals value. That's not good, and it's going to tell me that because I'm trying to set counter equal to something while well, I'm inside of the set method, so that's actually recursive. So you use the keyword field there. So again, this doesn't really have anything to do with the person um, example, but I created this variable called counter, um, which is actually a backed variable. So I set it equal to zero, so it is actually backed by an instance variable, but the difference is that when you go to set the value of counter, if the value is greater than zero, then it will set. If the value is not greater than zero, then nothing will happen. So that's just another example um, of a property that happens to be backed. But this example, our name uh, example, is not backed. So it's just a getter and a setter with no variable behind it. So that is all for this episode. As always, subscribe if you want to see more. Comment with what you want to learn. And if you like this video, click the like button. I'll see you guys soon with some more code. Bye for now.